JBN, we keep you informed. Brother shot one fatally on way home from party in Trelawney. Two brothers were attacked and shot one fatally in Trelawney early on Sunday morning. Reports are that the brothers were pounced upon by unknown assailants while they were on their way home from a party in the parish. The deceased has been identified as the elder brother, 20-year-old Ryan Neal of a Retreat Heights Trelawney address. Reports are that about 4.30 a.m., the brothers were walking home along the roadway in Retreat Heights when they were attacked by armed men who alighted from a motor car. The brothers were shot and injured by the assailants, who then returned to their vehicle and sped off. The two injured men were taken to the hospital, where the elder brother was pronounced dead and the other was admitted for treatment. The Falmouth police are investigating the incident. Construction worker shot and killed in Green Island, Anova. A 26-year-old construction worker was shot and killed by unknown assailants in Green Island, Anova, on Saturday, October 5. The deceased has been identified as Kemmer Gallimore of Green Island, Anova, and a St. Catherine address. According to the Green Island Police, about 9.40 a.m. on Saturday, residents living at a section of the community known as Salt Creek stumbled upon Gallimore's body and summoned the police. On the arrival of the lawmen, Gallimore was discovered lying along a section of the roadway with gunshot wounds to his upper body. The body was moved to the morgue. The Green Island Police are investigating. University student terrified after spending weekend in jail. The trauma of spending a weekend in jail and being taken before the court caused a university student to break down in tears last Monday. On entering the dock inside the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court, the accused man was visibly terrified, and it was not long before the tears started streaming down his face. When the prosecutor told him that he was before the court for absconding bail and requested a plea, the man told the court that he was guilty with an explanation. The accused man said that he and his ex-girlfriend had a dispute at the University of the West Indies Mona on May 13. He explained further that after he was charged, he was at the library studying when he misplaced the bail bond in a book and was unable to locate it. He said, too, that his ex-girlfriend was also unable to find her receipt. He wept while revealing that he was offered a job and was supposed to start last Thursday. According to the accused man, he worked out things with his ex-girlfriend before she went on the overseas work and study program, so he didn't make much of his not locating the bail bond until two Fridays ago when a police officer told him that he had something for him at the police station. So why are you crying, sir? Parish Judge Vaughn Smith inquired. Don't run up your pressure. The prosecutor told the court that the complainant had gone to look for a friend when she saw the accused man sleeping on the porch and took a photo of his foot. When he was awakened, he demanded her phone and squeezed her neck. At this time, the accused man began sobbing. Nobody cry. We are going to call her and she can explain to the court, the prosecutor told the accused man. I know you just got a new work. Which day is good for you to return to court, the prosecutor asked. Any other day, sir, he cried. He was subsequently offered own surety bail in the sum of $80,000. Before he was escorted out of the courtroom, he was told that if the complainant says his explanation is true, the matter can be brought to an end. NSC approves plan to improve citizen security in at-risk communities. The National Security Council, NSC, chaired by Prime Minister Andrew Holness, has approved a citizen security plan, which is a key component of Plan Secure Jamaica, and is aimed at improving citizen security in at-risk communities. The plan was approved last Thursday at the NSC's monthly meeting, according to a release from the Office of the Prime Minister. Also discussed at the meeting were the issue of repeat traffic offenders and recent concerns raised by members of the entertainment fraternity about the enforcement of the Noise Abatement Act. Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson said there will be an increased focus on stopping these offenders, while Olness called on the Ministries of Justice and the National Security to work with the Attorney General's Office to ensure a strong system of enforcement. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister, while recognizing the value of the entertainment industry to Jamaica, emphasized that all relevant stakeholders will be working towards solutions for objective standards and services within the ambit of the law. The NSC meeting was also attended by opposition spokesman on national security Fitz Jackson, signaling the government's bipartisan approach. Small businesses take a hit from Gisco Alpart layoffs. 
when more than 900 Alport employees lost their jobs because Alport bauxite plant shut down operations in 2009. It resulted in the largest block redundancies from one company in Jamaica. It also burnt a hole in the pockets of residents and small entrepreneurs of Nain St. Elizabeth who rely heavily on the patronage of the Alport workers to make ends meet. Then in 2017, when the gates were once again opened and thousands of workers flooded through the turnstiles at the now renamed Drisco Alpart bauxite plant, it triggered fanfare in the small but bustling Nain Square. Things were happening again. South St. Elizabeth and Nain, to be exact, was once again a decent place to make a little money, Althea said. Now faced again with the stark reality of a downturn in business, small business operators in Nain are angry about the layoffs and can barely contain their frustration. Althea said that she is now staring at the possibility of finding some other venue from which to sell her home-cooked meals as a majority of the 1,000 Jisco workers have already been sent home because of the scheduled upgrade of the plant. She said that the layoffs, which began in July, have been having a debilitating effect on her prospects for earning an income. It has really been bad because first time we used to cook and deliver the food to our many customers over the plant. But now it's bad because the ones who are still there are taking food but we can't make no money as it's a very small amount of workers live over there, she said recently. I used to have enough customers to make money every fortnight and be happy paying my bills, restocking for the following week and taking care of my family. With all the changes here, all that there has been thrown out of sync. It's really bad now, Althea added. One employee reasoned that while the planned upgrade was good for the company's long-term operations, laying off so many workers could be a major setback for small businesses in the area. The operator of a bar in the square, said to be one of the more popular chill spots, just a stone's throw away from the Jisco plant, is considering having a single bar attendant instead of the two women he currently employs on a week-on, week-off schedule. It really serious here, man. Them place I used to be very busy, especially this time of the day, he said. Now look upon this. One man sipping a beer on the bartender. All the people him from over the plant gone at the yard. So we're not making any money again. Meters away sits the largest wholesale supermarket in the town. Its operator said her business has been struggling in recent months and she's bracing for worse. As we noted that her customer base has fallen off dramatically with only a few passers by and some residents turning up to make purchases. Me not lying it wicked. Me are they getting the kind of sale me used to get. Only a fraction and it is costing us at the moment, she said. Alpart, which operated under the Russian mining company UC Resource brand up to three years ago, signed a deal in July 2016 to complete the U.S. $300 million sale of its 1.6 million ton Alpart alumina refinery to China's Jinquan Iron and Steel Company, Jisco, China's fifth largest alumina producer. Jisco has spent approximately U.S. $300 million to date on rehabilitating the plant. Guy concerned about dengue cases calls for urgent attention. Opposition spokesperson on health Dr. Maurice Guy is calling for the government to step up its vector control interventions in light of what he says is an increase in dengue cases across Jamaica. In a statement yesterday, Guy said he has been informed that spikes in cases have been recorded in Clarendon, Manchester and St. Elizabeth. Further, he said that the information also indicate that health facilities are being overwhelmed and according to him in response there is a triage system where only the very life-threatening cases are being admitted. Reports are that a child has died and that others are being sent home even when their platelet counts are low and at the risk of imminent bleeding. There are also reports that the program instituted by the Ministry of Health and Wellness has come to a halt as the vector control and vector eradication programs are not being adequately funded, Guy claimed. Guy said the situation has been exacerbated by the recent downpours. According to him, the situation has been worsened by the fact that there has been no visible fogging in communities. He's calling for urgent action. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.